Hello ladies and gentlemen, section 5.2 is all about oxidation numbers or how you've been told about them in the past. These are the charges associated with individual um, metals or ions. Charges and oxidation numbers, you can kind of use those words uh, interchangeably, but we're going to call them oxidation numbers. In yesterday's lesson, all of these charges or oxidation numbers that were given to you, plus 2, minus 2, 0, etc., now they're not going to be given to you all the time. And there are three or four rules that you just have to memorize and understand. Then we apply them to individual reactions. So let's go over these rules on this video. Tomorrow in class we'll apply them and you'll get all the practice that you could possibly want. First off, here's the easy one. If there's no charge given, you can just assume that it's a zero. Straight up, don't make it any harder than it needs to be. If you're neutral, if you're a single atom, a single metal, and there's no charge given, it's a zero. Easy. If the charge is given, then you just pretend that they're not lying to you. So if you have a something like calcium plus two, well then oxidation number is plus two. Don't think they're lying and saying, oh, it must be plus three. So if it's given, just use it. If you're a column one, well, you're always a plus one. If you're a column two, you're always a plus two. Straight up. We've done that in every chapter since the very beginning. If you're a halogen, you're going to be at the end of something. You're always a minus one. So the periodic table is true. Column one's plus one. Column two's plus two. The halogens, which is column number 17, will be minus one if they're at the end like that. Those are the straightforward ones. Put your seatbelt on, here's where it gets strange. Oxygen can have three different oxidation numbers. Okay? Oxygen, 99.9% .9 of the time, is minus two. If it's just a straight up non-metal, like we've seen it in every compound in Chem 12 so far, it's a minus two. But there's a special compound called a peroxide. A peroxide is a metal 2O2. Now that metal will be a column 1 or a column 2. In this general setup, it's a column 1. For example, H2O2 or Na2O2. I just said to you that column ones are always plus one, always. So this Na is a plus one, and the other Na is a plus one, which means there are two O's that have to cancel those off at minus one and minus one. So in a peroxide, oxygen has a charge of minus one, not minus two. And when oxygen is in diatomic O2 gas, the charge, like in very the very first rule number one, is zero, which means each individual O is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. So oxygen can be minus two 99.9% .9 of the time. It's minus one in a peroxide, and it's zero when it's diatomic. Okay? Hydrogen is very similar. It can also have three oxidation numbers. 99.9% .9 of the time, H is a metal, and the oxidation number is plus one. Every once in a while, though, it can be a non-metal. When it's a non-metal, it means it's at the end of the formula, like in NaH, CaH2. Again, going back to that second rule, column one is always plus one, column two is always plus one. Two. So if you have NaH, and we already know Na has to be a plus one, then H has to be a minus one. If calcium is always a plus two, H must be a minus one. And then exactly like oxygen, if H2 has an overall charge of zero, then each H must be zero. Other than that, everything is straight up. <laughs> And I say that with a little laugh because you're probably ready to turn this video off. Let me show you what we mean here. 
if you have a compound CrO4 minus 2, changing my colors, you need to solve for Cr. What charge does Cr actually have? means that you need to know what O is. Well, O in this case is minus 2. It's not diatomic and it's not a peroxide. So what that means is you need to figure out what CR is. So to solve for CR, you're going to have CR plus whatever the charge is on O. You've got four of them and each O is minus 2. So now you've got negative 8 charges for the O and this whole thing has to add up to give you an overall total charge of minus 2. It means that this CR must be a plus 6, because plus 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So the chromium has a charge of plus 6, because we know that the oxygen has a charge of minus 2. And the whole thing has to add up to negative 2 overall. Let's try it again. HClO, we're trying to solve for Cl which means we need to know H, we need to know O. Well, H's and O's are just plus 1, minus 2, because it's not in a peroxide and it's not diatomic. So H is plus 1, plus whatever Cl is. 4 O's at minus 2 is negative 8, and that whole charge on the whole molecule is 0. So plus 1, plus Cl, minus 8 has to give you 0, so that Cl must be a charge of 7. Yes, chlorine in this example has an oxidation number of 7. The ones listed on your periodic table that you got in grade 9 and 10 and 11 are just very common. They're not the actual charges. So wrap your head around that. That's why there are no charges on the Chem 12 periodic table. Let's keep trying some. Let's find Cr and Cr207. Well, I need to find two Crs. There are 7 O's. 7 times 2 is minus 14, and this whole thing has to equal negative 2. So something times 2 minus 14 is negative 2, that something is plus 6. And for the people that are weak at the algebra, I'm adding 14 to both sides, and then I'm dividing by 2. You're going to get 6. Okay, let's find it for P and L Li3PO4. I've got three Li's, sorry, I've got three things from column one, so I've got plus three, plus my P, four O's is minus eight, equals zero. That P must be a plus five. Plus five, plus three, minus eight is zero. Okay, so the oxidation number or the charge on P is plus five. Okay, we'll do these tomorrow in class and we'll do these tomorrow in class. Let's expand what we've just done. Because we can now find the charges, we can then apply it to whether it's being oxidized or reduced, whether it's gaining or losing electrons. So here we have Mn plus 3. That charge is given, so it's a plus 3. Changing into MnO4. Well, what is Mn in MnO4? So we're solving for Mn. There are four O's at minus 2 each is minus 8 equals negative 1. So this Mn is actually a plus 7, because plus 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So before it was plus 3, after it was plus 7, the charge is increasing. It's losing electrons. That means it's now, we can now label this as being oxidized. Okay. Let's try another one. CuNO3,2 is ionic. That's a spectator. What we really say is that Cu is a charge of plus 2, and there are no charge there, so it's 0. So from plus 2 to 0, the charge is being reduced. The charge must be gaining electrons. That's reduction. So it's almost the same as yesterday, but now we're going to do a little bit more work in calculating the charge. This is where we're going to start tomorrow. It looks really complicated, but I'm telling you right now, it's not as bad as it is. Um, so we'll see everyone in class tomorrow.